I'm James Chow, UNA's Goodwill Ambassador, and delighted here to be uh, today with you in this space to talk about public-private partnerships. Of course, the global response against AIDS as we know it is now 33 years old. Of course, as we all know here, since that time, the face of AIDS has changed dramatically. All search is incredibly unique because I'm, I'm going to brag a little bit on your behalf and then don't get too comfortable because I'm going to push it back to you a little bit. Good. <laughs> Oil Search has brought on health ministry staff to work together with your staff. So you've taken the lead from them, but you're supporting them in what their policy planning and in terms of executing. This department has now become the biggest department in your entire company, I believe. The uh, Health Foundation Department the is the biggest single department. Of yes. an enormous company as it is. That is your commitment. There's always a concern about sustainability. One day, if all search is not able or does not have the capacity to partner and to hold the hand of the health ministry, there have also been concerns not only with this one company, but that the, the government gets very comfortable and that it then begins to not hold, but then to tilt and then lean and then push its weight on you. Do you worry about that as well? Of course. I mean, this is an extremely difficult and delicate balance to, to, uh, to draw. There's been substantive efforts and substantial money spent over time by the Australian government and other supporters to build the capacity within the, the Papua New Guinea government. And um, there has only been, unfortunately, patchy success. Um, it, there obviously is the national government, which we deal with. And, and as I say, they control the strategies and we work under those. Uh, if you go out to the, to, the, to the field, to the country, to the highlands of Papua New Guinea, one of the areas that we work, the provincial government was only set up two years ago, two and a half years ago. They don't have a public service. They don't have the arms and legs to deliver many of the services that are expected. Now, we could stand back and say, well, look, it's government's uh, responsibility to deliver this, knowing full well that they have absolutely no capacity to deliver those programs and save lives. And so our focus initially was to step in to become a deliverer of services through our health foundation. But now that's moving much more into working very closely with the provincial governments and helping them build capacity and helping them to progressively build their position. And this is not an easy or a quick fix. Uh, one of the local hospitals that we deal with, I, I call it a hospital, it's the nearest hospital to our main gas field that's on production is deeply, deeply challenged. There is one doctor for 400,000 people, effectively. There are massive health issues, which we believe we must help the provincial government address. Now, that is happening. It's happening with support of the national government, but it also takes some time to actually have an impact on people on the ground. And we've taken a view that we can't just step back and take a principal view they're going to lean on us. They are going to lean on us initially, but it, let me tell you that the art is very much get that capacity in and progressively pull back. We have to do it that way, but our initial approach at the moment in this phase of activity is we want to stop people dying. Let's talk about the how-tos. Um, as we said, there may be people right here in this room right now who says, I want to be a part of this. I want to talk to somebody who can uh, make that happen to be a private sector leader, private sector company. Um, the title of our panel is Leveraging Complementary Strength for Impact at Scale. What are the key ingredients to move from an HIV pilot project, like Rhonda said, in one or two communities? How do you take that big if it needs to be? And is that an achievable goal, uh, even where HIV prevalence in countries like PNG is especially high? Well, I think, uh, first off, uh, the dialogue that uh, we're having here is a, is a significant step forward um, uh, in terms of bringing people along and showing examples and real examples that have worked um, both from a social and a business perspective. Um, there is no doubt that that dialogue is, is passing a message, pre presenting positive examples of how we can actually scale up uh, the PPPs in very specific examples and specific environments. 
Uh, it certainly is something that uh, we feel and have found in this conference, uh, an ability to learn from other people's experiences uh, as well as presenting our own gives us some empowerment to take back into our working environment and actually go and talk and lead with other community and uh, private sector groups to drive uh, a much better outcome and demonstrate this can be done not just in PNG but elsewhere. This is the, the direction that we have to go. And I might also say we need to demonstrate that to government. There's a huge ongoing suspicion about the private sector being involved in this. And, and I genuinely believe we need to demonstrate again through these sorts of forums uh, what we're about, why we do it, how we do it, and how we can contribute in a very positive way. Because there is a massive stigma about working with the private sector, which hopefully is being progressively overcome with these sorts of dialogues and examples.